French Nibs again, out in the garage today, doing a little bit of goofing around, a um, little bit of tinkering out here today, and uh, I was going to save this part of the this uh, Air Venturi Avenger build until after I had taken it out to the range, but uh, I mounted my scope up uh, on this, and uh, these scope rings are pretty high, and the actual Avenger stock uh, does not really have enough rise to it for the cheek weld. You get a real comfortable cheek weld. It's it's usable, but uh, what I have here is a scope from UUQ uh, sent over to me for evaluation and review. And uh, so far it is a really nice looking scope. Uh, I haven't shot with it yet, but uh, just looking out, I have it set up for uh, looking out the back door uh, to the back of my property is 40 yards and uh, the I, I haven't taken it all the way up to 24 power yet but I've taken it up to about 16 or 18 and uh, it is super super clear uh, I can see the ants crawling up the tree not really but I can see the bark just as clear and plain as day is like I'm right on top of the tree out there so I think it's going to be a really nice scope uh, for that setup uh, and what we're going to be doing though is putting on this buck rail furniture um, that uh, I've gotten for this thing. It has a uh, AR style grip and a buffer tube and then an AR uh, adjustable stock. So we have our cheek riser here which actually so the I was looking at it and the with even without the cheek riser on there the AR stock is higher than the comb on the uh, eight, the Avenger stock so that would be better even without the riser but that three quarter inch riser is going to go uh, and get me right up where I need to be and then we have a uh, M-lock hand grip so we can put some uh, some bipods on there and make that look pretty cool. Uh, but the first thing we got to do is actually get this guy out of the stock. So um, for that, I'm going to set this stuff off to the side for now <clears throat> so it's out of the way. And for that, uh, we just need a couple of uh, Allen wrenches. Uh, first one I know is three millimeters, but uh, the other one I'm not exactly sure. It's a little bit smaller. ahead and uh, bring it down to the tabletop here so my my bench is a mess I'm sorry so the first thing we need to do to put that other equipment on is get this stock off so the first thing you got to do is the, from the trigger guard forward is a two-piece clamshell that wraps around uh, the gun and there's two three millimeter bolts on both sides and I think I got you just off but that's okay so we take those two out and then <clears throat> I've already been playing around with this so I kind of know what I'm doing here <laughs> but uh, so I, what I did was just take you gotta kind of start separating the, the stock and it, once you get it started you can get a screwdriver underneath this uh, little piece of pick picatinny rail up front and then that piece will come off and uh, we'll save that for later down the road if I ever feel like switching back now I'm gonna flip it over and the other side should come off a lot easier so another, we'll save all this hardware for you know, a Ziploc bag in case we need to switch back for any reason, something, yeah, so that came off a lot easier. So those two kind of lock together. So the next thing is we need to get the, flip it over so we can see that. So we've got this uh, 
barrel band right here. We need to get that piece off. That won't be used in the uh, the buck rail system. And I think that's a smaller one. That looks like a... Oh, it's not 2.5, two millimeter. So that is a two millimeter. So this is something that uh, I noticed uh, in a bunch of other bunch of other reviews people were and these were from a couple of years ago people were talking about uh air venture he had just grub screws here that were holding this pinched into the um pinched into the upper air tube and i think they took heart of that because this is definitely different than that now um Looks more of a, like a clamping type of system rather than just a grub screw pinching into the... Yeah, it's a lot. So before, uh, a couple people were commenting about how that was biting into the side of the tube, and it, this one is not doing that, so they must have uh, taken, taken that advice to heart and changed the design a little bit since then. So we need to take that barrel band off and uh, we'll set that off to the side. We won't be using that unless we go back to the original setup. Where did that other screw go? Oh, well, I'll have to find that. Oh, there it is over there. So all these extra pieces, we'll put those in a Ziploc baggie and so now we have a couple of more Allen screws to take out. Um, we have a, another three millimeter one right here. And then uh, that one's bigger. So that one's gonna be, looks like a, like a four, four, four and a half. should come off. All right, I'm gonna pause the camera just for a minute, take a break, and I'll be right back with you. All righty, so I am back. Bet you guys think I had to go and use the bathroom, but uh, that is not the case. Uh, five o'clock, feeding time for the dogs. Both of them are sick on prescription, so uh, I have to make sure they get their prescriptions uh, right on time or uh, things could get worse. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, keep on going. <clears throat> so I have already, so I, I changed out. So this came from uh, Buck Rail. It would come with a black grip here and a black Magpul buttstock, but I chose I wanted to make it look a little different, so I swapped mine out with the uh, the Dark Earth uh, Magpul buttstock. I have, still have the three-quarter inch riser, but uh, I want to show you one thing that I saw with mine. So you will need a, uh, a 7 sixteenths. You probably don't need that long of an extension, but uh, if you did want to change that out, there's just a uh, screw up inside here. Again, uh, a three millimeter, I believe it is. Um, but so on this, uh, there's a long bolt that runs all the way up through this tube that is what attaches to a nut that's down inside of here. But I wanted to show you what I saw on mine, and I'm not throwing any stones at anybody. This stuff is great from Buckrail, but I had to, I did have to make a tiny, tiny bit of. Uh, Fitment, I guess you could call it, on mine, and uh, just in case you run into the same problem, 
Uh, it's really easy to do, and it, I think it makes a huge difference. So, so this little this little nub that sticks up here actually engage. Oh, my the nut fell out. Great. Uh, engages that slot right there, and uh, on mine. That, that little nub was just a little too tall. And so when I had that tightened down, there was a little bit of gap on the sides and it allowed a little bit of movement side to side. And uh, I like mine to be nice and tight so it's precise. Uh, let me find that nut. Hopefully the garage monster didn't swallow it up. Oh, there it is. That was, I thought it was gonna be a little bit, a little bit too big for the garage monster to swallow up on me, but Let's go ahead and uh, so that so that will come in a little plastic bag that will be strapped onto the uh, thing there. But you want to get that nut down inside the there's a little hex place to receive that there. And then you uh, have to get the bolt back in place. I'm really kind of excited to get this uh, Avenger out to the to the range, but today is stormy and rainy, so probably won't be today. So we get this uh, just tighten this guy down. It is plastic, so you gotta be careful <laughs> to overdo it. But oh, I didn't do it enough yet. Okay, so now there's no no side to side movement of that tube. Before I took just, I mean, it literally was just a a whisker off of the off of that. Um, to make it set into that groove a little bit further. And uh, that made all the difference in the world. So now uh, we have a, a, a screw that actually comes with the buck rail kit that uh, we're going to actually put the lock washer on there. And we are going to, so this is going to sit. So there's a little square right here that'll sit over top of where the regulator and uh, bleeder screw fit on and then the screw is going to go in right there and uh, three millimeter Allen tightens up holds that all together pretty simple installation really So if anybody's interested in buying this or any other uh, really awesome buck rail products uh, down in the description on this video, I do have a, let me get my little bag back up here now that we've got the, for that thing to sit on. So the, uh, the description, like I was saying down below in the, uh, text of the description you'll see a uh, link to the buck rail website that is my affiliate link and uh, if you use that affiliate link uh, I will get a commission on sales of most of the things on his site things that he uh, drop ships from other people uh, I don't get a commission on but that's okay up a little bit to get that oh, there's one there's three of them there's three locking screws here there it goes oh nope 
I did that wrong. Ugh. So there's actually three separate tubes on this. There's the, the barrel tube, then there's an upper upper air tube. Oh, I'm gonna you out of frame here. So there's a barrel tube that goes around the topmost ring, and I had it one down. And then there's the upper air tube, and then there's this this lower air tube here too. And that the lower half of the there she goes. Really pretty simple. That just slides on there like that, and you bring it right up against the front of the receiver, and then you got your two, I think it's two millimeter, and just snug those guys down. No need to go crazy with it, but uh, just snug them down so they won't move. Oop. A little, little crack, don't wanna go anymore. <laughs> So that is that. Now we can put our, our butt stock back on here. And uh, there is one more thing. Stand by. So we have the uh, buck rail air stripper and the silencer, suppressor, whatever you want to call it. That goes on the end over here. Come on. There's where I like my, my Nipex players here. Smooth jawed so you don't mar anything up. Just needed a little nudge. Couldn't get it with my fingers. So we pull out the old. Should look a lot, very kind of similar to that anyway. Well, not really. <laughs> so we pull out the old air stripper and put the new air stripper in its place. When I do take this out to the range to test it, I'll bring my DB meter and we will test it with and without, with and without the suppressor on there. To, it was, it did have some pretty good bark. I took a couple of shots out here in the garage with it. and It's not excessively loud, but it, it does have a, a little bit of bark. more bark than I would want to shoot with it out in the garage. So there we go. We have that all installed. Let me bring you back up to eye level here. It's a little warm in the garage today, <laughs> but uh, that is July for you. But there you go. There is the Air Venturi Avenger. And uh, yep, that I, that is a lot better. That. Uh, that cheek weld is, is right where it needs to be now for getting up on that scope. Before it was just a little low. I had to come up on my chin a little bit more to get up there to it. But now I'm I'm right on my cheek there. That is very nice. So, and uh, we'll be doing a review on this UUQ scope. I'm, uh, first impressions, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, 6 to 24. Most of my shooting, I don't need 24 power, but... Uh, that gives you that, so it's kind of like buying a stereo. You don't ever need 600 watts, but uh, if you only go up to 200 watts, it's gonna blow your eardrums out, but it'll be nice and clear. So if I only go up to 16 or 18 power, uh, it should have uh, that uh, max headroom. <laughs> so, and there is uh, the end with our suppressor on there. Very cool, very cool kit. Like I said, uh, Everything's available on Buckrail. Um, tell Terry the nib sent you over. <laughs> and uh, you can't go wrong. 
is such a cool thing. I've got so many kits from them now. I've got that. I've got, uh, so we've got the, uh, oh, let's see. I've got my Diana, Diana Chaser. Nice, cute little micro carbine made out of a pistol. And then I've got a couple more over there. I'm not going to go get those, but I've got these two close ones right here. And then I've got this beam in 2027. It's a little bit bigger than the, uh, the chaser, but this is a PCP beam in 2027. Uh, really cool, really cool build. And, uh, might have to put that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, that's a really, really fun gun. A lot of fun to shoot. <clears throat> so anyway, made this one pretty long. But uh, usually my uh, tinkering videos do end up going long. But uh, stand by for that coming out to the range. And uh, we'll be doing a lot of shooting with that. So hope you guys like the video. Till next time, have a great day.